Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Oh, you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. Hey, folks. Welcome back. If you're wondering why I played that clip of Trump answering questions to the press about Charlottesville, it's because he was wondering at the time what other American symbols would be under attack next. He asks if Jefferson or Washington will be next, both of which who are currently under attack by the way. His point at the time was to defend the people protesting against taking down the statues because it appears the left is literally attempting to erase or change our history. We're going to have to make sacrifices. We're going to have to change our traditions, our history. Judging by the pure insanity that we're witnessing over the Betsy Ross flag being on a Nike shoe, I'd say it won't be long before they're calling the American flag a symbol of hate and racism that must be destroyed. Let's face it, it's not as if these people ever had any respect for the U.S. flag to begin with, so it's not that hard to imagine that it will be next on the chopping block. The Betsy Ross flag, an early version of the American flag with 13 stars and stripes used in the 1700s before slavery was abolished. Using that flimsy logic, you can make the exact same argument for the American flag and all of American history for that matter. If you look at history, how did slavery get here? It was brought here by the British Empire. The Betsy Ross flag is literally a symbol of revolution that was created after we defeated the British. The flag doesn't represent slavery, it represents victory of free people over tyranny. Yes, slavery did continue for a long time, but it was eventually ended by America. Americans. Ask yourself, what other historic national flags would these people label as symbols of racism? The fact is, there were way more African slaves in South America at this time, and in fact, the Arab slave trade had been using African slaves for hundreds of years prior to America even existing. Yet, for some inexplicable reason, this movement to erase a nation's national history doesn't exist anywhere but in the U.S. In some cases, the Betsy Ross flag has been co-opted by white supremacist groups like the KKK. Oh yeah? Well, the KKK also uses the American flag. What exactly do they mean by co-opted, and what evidence is there to back that claim up in the first place? I think the viewer is supposed to just automatically hate the Betsy Ross flag because she said the KKK uses it. Hey, here's a question. Who cares if the KKK uses it? Are we going to let them dictate what symbols we're allowed to use and which ones we're not? It's not their flag. It's an American flag. Why have we never heard this complaint up until the point that Colin Kaepernick declared it a hate symbol? Who, by the way, was defended by the left and by the media for disrespecting the flag with claims that the flag was never his target. Now we know better. Some on social media were angry that the flag appeared to celebrate a time when slavery was accepted. One calling the design air slaveries. <sighs> so... Because some faceless name on an Instagram post called them air slaveries, we're supposed to just look at this beloved American symbol as something hateful and evil? I'm going to get a little conspiratorial here, but this is looking more and more like the tactics that were laid out by the Communist Manifesto and by a certain Soviet KGB defector who warned us that plans like this were already underway. Back in the 80s, he warned us that Marxists and communists had already infiltrated the school system and were proceeding to tear down American culture and demoralize Americans with the ultimate goal of something he called ideological subversion. Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. I'm not going to go into Yuri Bezimov right now because, quite frankly, I can't show you enough of the interview, but I recommend that each and every one of you go and watch it when you're done with this video. I'll put a link in the pinned comment. Yeah, because, you know, words matter, symbols matter too. Why don't we wear a swastika for July 4th? The cross burning on somebody's lawn. This huckster is Professor Eric Dyson. He's a professor of ignorance. He's a man that, I like to remind people, was once called a snake oil salesman by the Honorable Stephen Fry at the conclusion of the Monk debates. We've had, you know, classic, if I can call it, huckstering snake oil um, pulpit talk, um, <laughs> which is, um, it's a... 
I also highly recommend you go check that debate out when you're done here. But this guy, Eric Dyson, has the nerve to sit there and pretend that he actually believes the Betsy Ross flag, one of the greatest symbols of this country's birth, is the equivalent to a swastika or a burning cross. That's really funny because I don't remember Eric Dyson or anybody for that matter taking issue with Barack Obama using this exact flag during his inauguration ceremony. Not that the Obamas had any respect for the flag either, but certainly nobody called it a burning cross or a swastika. Don't let your guard down because these folks are on a mission to demonize this country, its founding, and ultimately demoralize us all from even putting up a fight. That's all I have for you today, folks. I'm off to shoot some fireworks and eat some burgers. If you want to support this channel, consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also send me a tip on PayPal. Also, head on over to my Teespring store and check out our new designs. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Happy Independence Day. Um,